Risky Kitchen. I'm Country Joe. Today we're going to make some good old fashioned Texas gumbo. So, to first start off, we're going to start with a big pan because you need a big pan to make gumbo. We're going to use some pan because everyone loves pan in America. We all know that. It's pretty fattening. The spring pan because we don't want gumbo sticking on the sides. That'd be real gross. Now, we've got to add about, mm, about four cups of water. It can be tap water, bottled water because I know some people in America have really bad taste in water, <laughs> California. Um, it's kind of, you don't want lead poisoning in your gumbo because that would be deathly. There's my third cup right there, just one more cup, and that's gonna do her. Doesn't matter what, how hot or cold it is. Now we're gonna add about a fourth cup of Ben fiber because everyone needs fiber in their diet to go poop. If you didn't poop, I don't even think you're human. Eat or an animal or a mammal or purebred or whatever you are. There's a fourth cup right there. Just let it sit in there. Don't stir it because we don't want to stir it yet. Next, we're going to add um, some good old beef steak nuggets. You can use pork nuggets, egg nuggets, anything you want. So just add about ah, a cup of those in there. That should do her because we, we need a little steak in there. Next, it's time for a little taste. So we're gonna add a couple dirty socks. They smell really great right off the foot. They probably have some foot fungus on it because foot fungus is pretty good for your diet too. So just add those in there. Just, just set them in there and let them float around and soak up the ingredients. Next is cornstarch. It's your vegetable in this soup. Add about a fourth cup of that too. Cornstarch is a great thing to have in gumbo. It, Sticks everything together, makes it look delicious, makes it taste delicious, and it's corn. Now it's time for a couple noodles because we all love our noodles, especially in here in France, right? <laughs> just add a couple of those. I want to take a handful of them and just break them in half and add that in there. Okay. <laughs> now it's time to add about one light bulb because. You know, you need your electrolytes somehow, and this provides electricity. So just add that in there and scoop it around. Next, we're going to add a little cup of mushroom. So you just want to open it like that. This is Campbell's chicken or cream of mushroom. So just open it like that. Just dump in the whole can. If it won't come out of this thing. There we go. Get a spoon and knock it out, but you don't need too much of this because you don't want your gumbo all mushroomy. Just leave that in there. We don't want to stir any of the ingredients because we don't want to disrupt their just management stuff. Next, we're gonna add our tuna. This can's already been opened, so pretty much all you want to add is the tuna juice because it adds lots of flavor into the mix. What you do is you just cut a little slit open like this and you dump all that tuna juice in as much as you can. Squeeze it out of there. That's so much flavor, this gumbo. There we go. About a half a cup or so the tuna juice will do. Our next ingredient is our lentils. Lentils is great because you can always, it just makes it so yummy and delicious about a cup or so of lentils half cup cup kind of depends how much you're making of this stuff so yeah there's about a cup of that just still leave it sitting there i know you're tempted to stir it aren't you our next thing is a little tad because everyone needs a little bleach in their diet so just add about a fourth of a teaspoon to me or a teaspoon in there adds color too and it smells great our last thing is the zucchini everyone loves zucchini right <laughs> oh mm, so good okay so we're gonna have a little butcher knife right here we're cutting them into little pieces Woo! oh don't do that at home folks let's keep cutting this little pieces like that and what I do, 
I cut them into little, little pieces like this. Just little chunks. Everyone loves a little veggie in there, gumbo. Yes, I have. Mm, so good zucchini. Oh, water in my mouth. Mm. So, just need a little, about maybe a half cup of zucchini. Put that all in there. Now, once you're done with zucchini, turn it on to half. Take your pitchfork like this, and you're just going to dump it all in there. You're going to stir it around, because this is good gumbo, you know. Mmm, zucchini. Oh, it's going to add so much flavor. Look at these socks. They're adding so much flavor to it. Oh, my God. And it smells great, folks. We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back, and this gumbo will be almost ready to go. And now, finally, the gumbo has been sitting for about four hours now, so it should be good. Let's check it out. Woo! That looks like some good gumbo there. You can see all the little lentils, how they smooshing up. Oh, my goodness, it smells... Oh, that smells really good. So, now we're going to... I'm just going to take a little test taster here. Uh, gumbo is great with meats, they're good with rice, noodles, any anything you really want to add, like a side dish kind of to it. Let's try this out. Mmm! That's really good. I guess, I think this would really be good with rice or noodles, actually. It has lots of flavor. Oh my gosh, I can feel it just mm, coming up in my mouth. So good. I really recommend this recipe to everybody. It takes a long time, but that's how that's how we do it in Texas. Thanks for watching Risky Kitchen. I'm Joe, and see you next time when I cook up a good recipe from Texas. If you're gonna play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. That lead guitar is hot, but not for Louisiana man.